evening is back fraternity and welcome to an evening with our host. I know we all know who he is, but I'm going to pretend it's a surprise before I introduce him. Karibu sana and a very uh, warm Ramadan uh, Karim to all our Muslim fraternity and welcome to this session where we're going to get to interact and hear from our host as we continue to uh, be more outstanding members of the accounting fraternity. My name is Claude and I'll be your host for this evening, assisted by several members. Uh, but for now, I would like to, uh, to share with you a few housekeeping rules, just so we can make sure we have a good and orderly uh, session together. So number one, I would like to ask my panelists to please ensure that they are muted unless I give them uh, access to speak uh, to our audience. To our audience members, Karibu Nisana again, please feel free to interact. You have the chat section where you can say hi to each other. And more importantly, you have the Q&A session, uh, sorry, Q&A function, which you can use to bring up any questions that you're curious about that our host uh, will be addressing or even on any other matters you may have that you'd like to bring to light. So Q&A, if you have any pertinent questions at any point throughout the session and our chat, if you just want to say hi to each other and wish uh, maybe a fellow CPA uh, in the Muslim fraternity a happy uh, Ramadan. Otherwise, Karibuni Sana, I would like us to kick off the session by just getting a feel of where we are mentally. I know uh, we're going through some very difficult times. A lot of us are coming to the end or have come over the end of the financial year. So there's a lot to do in our various spheres of work. Uh, so let's see how everyone is doing. And for this, we're going to use uh, a, a tool called Menti. It's a very simple tool. You'll go over to the website. I'm going to share it in the chat and on your screens as well. Uh, that's menti, M-E-N-T-I dot com, M-E-N-T-I dot com. And when you get to the website, it's going to ask you for a code and you're going to give it 64774478. Again, head over to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I dot com. And the code you're going to give it is 6 double, 6477-4478. Uh, also, I should let you know that uh, one of the functions of Zoom includes subtitles, which may or may not be very accurate, but I know are very useful to some of our colleagues who might uh, have visual uh, hearing uh, challenges. If, however, you find the subtitles a bit distracting, just hover over them and then you can turn them off. Or you can move them around anywhere else on the screen, which is more comfortable. All right, great. So it's only going to be two quick questions that I'm asking on this Menti, just to get the feel of you, our audience. And our first question is, in one word, describe how you're feeling this evening. It's the mid-month. Uh, we've had interesting times with curfew for those in the forbidden zones. End of financial years. We have, uh, we have members who are hopeful, others are excited, others are tired. Whoever said tired, I can, I can sympathize. I know I'm also feeling a bit burnt out. It's been over one year with uh, some of us working from home and all the restrictions with COVID. I know it can weigh you down. Gutted. Oh, someone is beyond tired. They are gutted. I hope uh, it wouldn't be because of some bad news. Uh, sadly, I know we have been touched in a negative way by COVID and I hope you feel our love uh, throughout this session and the love of the wider ISPAC fraternity. We have energized, good, share the energy with us. Our second question is, what is your expectation from today's session? What are you looking forward to? I know the host is watching your answers closely and it would be good uh, to see if he can tweak uh, his engagement with you based on what your expectations would be. So I can see you're looking for deep engagement, very good. Uh, more information, very good. The clarity of ISPAC's future, Danisha's plan for young accountants and how, how we can transfer our credits to major accounting qualifications without doing too many papers. That's interesting. Uh, someone is curious about Danisha's manifesto. Others want to know where ISPAC is headed. Okay, these are pertinent questions. What will ISPAC improve in the profession so we're no longer laggards? I like that. Someone wants uh, accountants to be front and center. All right, someone also wants to know what the niche stands for. All right, giving hope for the future of the Institute. A few dark times, let's see what uh, the niche will have to say about that. 
and to learn more about who he is and what he has in store for ISPAC. All right, very good. Uh, keep the questions going. I can see in our chat function, CPA Bebwa, uh, repping Kwale County, Karibu Sana. So welcome very much. Uh, I hope everyone has a good session this, uh, this evening. So I'm not going to take up too much of your time. You're not here to hear me speak. You're very curious about what uh, our host has to say. So who is our host? For those who haven't had a chance to interact with uh, Denish before, uh, actually it's CPA Denish. I know you'll take your titles very seriously as you should. You've worked very hard to earn them. In fact, looking at our participant list, some of you are, pr are proudly bearing the CPA qualification before your names, which is very good. Uh, otherwise, CPA Danish is the immediate uh, former national vice chairman of ISPAC, and this is a role he held till 2019. Of course, he's been a former ISPAC council member since uh, from 2017 to 2018. This is a person who is, has a very wide and uh, deep deep depth of field within accountancy spanning over 20 years. Personally, I know him as the internal audit director at Safaricom PLC, a position he has held in very strong standing, uh, reflected by uh, Safaricom's performance, as well as before that being a former um, risk assurance services director at PricewaterhouseCoopers. And he currently also sits on the board of the Kenya Pediatric Research Consortium as its treasurer. But uh, if I've missed out anything, apologies on my end. But otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, Karibu Sana, Danish, Karibu Sana to your audience. Thank you, Cloud. And good evening, uh, everyone, for joining us today. I appreciate your time uh, for joining me this evening. I will do a quick introduction. I know Cloud has done quite a good of justice. My name is CPA Denisha Sodo. I love this profession and I'm proud of the contribution of all those who profess it. Something else I love, I love this country. And I'm therefore happy to ask all of you who joined us again today to believe again to believe not just in the promise of this country, but in our abilities to realize it. I want to spend a few minutes to as briefly as I can, and as clearly as I can, share with you who I am, what I believe in, what values have brought me this far, and which way I think our profession and institute should get along. As I do so, I want you to remember in this session, we set it up so that we listen to you, the member. At the end of the day, it's about you, the member. Please in the chats, in the questions, keep all your expectations coming. I got all the ones you put on Menti. I appreciate them all. We add them coming, bring back all the questions, your hopes, your fears, your worries, all your thoughts about this institute. It is our institute. We will make it together. We will celebrate it together. Our institute was founded in 1978, and a few years ago, we marked 40 years. And if they say life begins at 40, our institute is just beginning to live. In the history of our institute, at various stages of that history, we have had to make significant step ups. The growth that we celebrate, and there's a lot to celebrate in ISPAC, has come because of service and sacrifice of many gone before and present. I thank all who've contributed to the growth of that profession. I am proud of the sacrifices many have made to make the many steps we have done. Today, ISPAC is the largest professional body in this country and by a mile. We, we also boast as the only institute, the first one to set up a university, very proud of KCA University that was founded by those who led this back in the early years, who are setting up the pace to expand training opportunities for young accountants in Kenya. 
CPS Center stands as a pride, as a beacon of pride on Vicar Road, and reminds every accountant of what we can do when we focus on a goal. The leadership of the INSPAC in the mid 90s set out to free ISPAC financially and believe that over reliance on member subscription was a risk. And so the journey to setting up CPS Center began. As we come to the back end of paying for the loan for it to achieve that freedom, we salute their contributions. In the last decade, we set out to increase membership of our institute. And we grew more than doubled our numbers. Today, we are nearly just under 30,000 members of ISPA, which is something to celebrate. But I also hope you realize, if you reflect that those who qualified uh, through CASNIP are more than 100,000, then you start to get worried whether ISPAC is the inside or the outside. There are more qualified accountants outside ISPAC than ISPAC, and that is a reason to get us all worried. How do we make ISPAC relevant to every member? How do we make ISPAC the pride of every accountant? In this country, we are privileged. Unlike many other jurisdictions, we only have one body, and it's backed by law. There's an act of parliament that creates the institute that defines the roles, and more importantly, gives ISPAC regulatory powers. Even in uh, bigger economies and countries, the regulatory role is not with the professional association. There's always a different regulator. So we have a quite a significant expectation on us. This country expects of us by law to regulate and grow this profession. Our members expect to serve, expect that the ISPAC must represent, be for them and serve their interests. And that, my friends, is where I was coming, where I come in. My love of accountancy began in high school. By a chance meeting, I met then council member just before he became chairman of the Institute. And, and he shared with us at the time that the golden bug scandal was the biggest corruption story in the history. If you're in high school in my time, you'd recall that school fees moved from 4,000 in one year to 20,000 in the other year. There has never been a steeper price increase any time in Kenya's history than that period of the early 90s. The linkage between accountancy and the discussions on the issues of our time at that time attracted me to this profession. And from that time that I started to study accounting in high school, I knew I was studying a subject that could be used to solve national and social issues. I studied accountancy to fix and understand Golden Bug. I would complete high school and join the Strathmore, uh, then College of Accountancy, as we waited to go to university and complete my accounting purpose. By the time I completed a degree in commerce at the University of Nairobi, it was clear to me that this was a profession that could be used to solve many of our problems. I built my career working for many years at PwC as an auditor, consultant, and working in very many areas and getting into many bits of it. I then joined Safaricom as a director in charge of audit, the role I currently hold. I joined ISPAC in 2005 at a very interesting time when all of us at the annual conference could fit in sand and sand in North Coast and you could meet everyone who came there because there were barely 100, 100, 150 people at the annual conference. But it was also an interesting one. The profile, the age, of those who came for that conference was a very different mix. At that time, there were only 4,000 registered accountants anyway. And accountants ISPAC was more than a regulator of practicing accountants. I have seen ISPAC grow. I have seen ISPAC expand. And today, I'm a proud member of ISPAC. But I also know that there's no time that accountancy has faced the biggest challenges than it does today. Many young accountants get into the profession today might have the same opportunities as I had many years ago, but they are fewer. There are more accountants now struggling for less opportunities. There's a lot of unemployed numbers in our membership. There's a lot of underemployed numbers in our membership and the space is narrowing. And yet the reverse side of this, this country requires accountability now more than any other time in history. Many of our state corporations still can't get clean audit reports and indication that our capacity or numbers is required to ensure accountability in that area. 
even our private companies, a lot of listed companies still collapse and therefore call the requirement for an accountant. It's our time to resolve this dilemma, to create opportunities for accountancy and make this profession that noble profession that it was. Our profession is a profession of nobility. It is a profession of courage. And more importantly, it's a profession of public interest. Today also, we have a very big diverse membership in our body. It is impossible to serve members as we did 20 years ago when 90% of the members were practitioners. And therefore it was very easy, straightforward to have a plan that works for them. Today, we have members in public sector, we have members in private sector, we have members in practice, but we also have within those sectors very different uh, disciplines of accountancy. We have those who do financial accounting, we have those who do consulting, we have those who do internal audit, we have every aspect of it, including a lot of our members who've gone into general management and business leadership, like our CEO at Safaricom, CPA Peter Ndegwa, the CEO at EPT Bank, uh, CPA James Mwangi, CPA Joshua Igara at KCB. There are very many, and that's a pride of the accountancy profession. And that's the hope that we want every young accountant to know that this profession offers limitless opportunities. Those of us who seek to lead it must convert those dreams into action plans and get it working. Six, six years ago, we discussed at the conference in Mombasa, the role of ISPAC in public accountability. It was an important discussion and I was privileged to present at the conference on the case for public accountability and the role of the accountant in that field. I, I got pained at that time, as I still do, that the accountability space has been left without a moral leader. This country has many challenges and it require many generations and many people first to solve them. But there are also those challenges that this country looks up to its sons and daughters who profess accountancy to deal with. The challenge of financial accountability rests solely on the shoulders of accountants of Kenya. Not just by law, because the Accountants Act requires us to advise the CS on that matter, but also morally, we are the best trained in the area of finance, and therefore we have a responsibility to deal with that matter. Today, I want you to know, my friends, my fellow accountants, that working on financial accountability of this country is not in addition to the work we do, does not take away the resources we do. It is what creates opportunities for us, our members. If you expand the accountability space, if you get the moral leadership of that role, not only will you get many of our people, many of them young and looking for space and opportunity, but we'll get respect to allow us to negotiate effectively in many of the roles that we need to fill in. If you recall in the 1990s, when this country was seeking civil liberties and second liberation, the religious leaders and the lawyers took moral leadership. And academia, those the university lecturers took the moral leadership of that case. And they fought, they led that space. We trusted them to lead that war. By the time we came to the dividends of that in 2010, when we fixed the constitution, lawyers almost fixed up every job you could think of in public sector. For you to do it, you need to be qualified to be a judge of the high court. And we couldn't complain because we had seen the work they have done in earning civil liberties. Today, even the most basic accounting job, counting votes, the chairman of IBC must be a lawyer. This is the benefit we get fellow accountants if we hone the accountability space in this country. We not only help our sons, daughters, and families who come here get a better country and fight corruption, we actually create space for the accountants. It is about the accountants of Kenya. Not only is there an expectation that we do this, it's also the right thing to do, but it also has a direct benefit on us. We'll expand a lot of opportunities for us. We will create a lot of space for many of us to fit in. But more importantly, we'll also get the trust of the people. If you, work, if you operate this profession like it's only ours and ignore many, of our citizens we will easily become irrelevant to them and they might not see what we do. Today, many of the financial reports that we issue are being relied on less and less. Those of you who work know banks really rely on the financial statements that we issue. We must bring back trust in this profession. So what then do I see that future to be? I see a future where ISPAC is 
member centered and every accountant and every accounting student and every young person aspiring to be an accountant looks up to ISPAC with pride as that beacon of light, as I did when I went to Strathmore and so then FCP Nguru Ashira then being elected chairman of the institute, it's the regime McPhee, my teacher then, and long for the day I'll put on an ISPAC child. That is the bit I long to see. Not where accountancy is now like a driving license that a lot of people do as their parents figure out what they need to do later. That I don't know what you'll do in life, but at least instead of being spoiled at home, go do accountancy. And then we get that bit. We need to look at the qualifications of the career path and how we get our accountants. And we need to find a support system of accountants. When this accountancy was created, it was a, a noble co a, a course. It was a noble profession because you were called into it. You didn't choose to become an accountant and you had to article to join in. You would not finish the final papers before you work under the privilege of a senior accountant. Today, there are very many senior members who we can make better use of. We have a college of fellows that we can call in to serve our members. And we have a lot of experienced accountants that we can get to hold on the hands of our young accountants and expand the opportunities for growth for them to build on that space. But the bigger bit, we will be, not only will we skilling them to do, and we can do that and do short-term uh, fixes, but my friends, we need to expand opportunities for accountants. And to do that, I want you to join me that we must raise the profile of ISPAC. We must serve Wanjiku at their most basic point of need. We must ensure that the investor in our stock markets and our companies can trust our reports again. We must <clears throat> support our practitioners and double their numbers in this country and let them grow and support them in bidding for work without discrimination whatsoever. We must become the definitive regulator of the profession and there'll be no one else who can define what form of accountant I am looking for because ISPAC is the only regulator of accountants. So if, because we are not doing that role, you are seeing a lot of people now defining saying you can bid for this job, but you must have a turnover of ABCD. You must, uh, you go to Sastra, you go to the banks, now they have their own lists that they look up to. We are leaving a gap that if you don't fix very soon, we will go. We always have an opportunity and a window to get things done, but that window doesn't last long. I ask you that we take up this window and fit it up. That if we go up and get that bit, we must protect the work that accountants do. And we must insist boldly and clearly that no one will do this work. Leadership of this issue requires tact. It requires diplomacy, but it also requires collaboration. It requires sometimes uh, negotiating and begging those in authority. Sometimes it requires taking a hard stance on them. Just as any of you who deals with regulators does, you let them win some, you, you hold your ground on others. It requires a very firm and strong position and view so that we build a strong profession for our members. We protect our members' family. There's no reason at all why currently even lawyers can walk across when the country is closed because their work is essential. KRA, needs, KRA is an essential service provider, yet accountants who are filing tax returns and doing accounts cannot be. There's a time we can request, there's a time we'll reform. The leadership of this profession requires that wisdom and that tact and making that choice that we get together and get it all. I see a profession that if we raise its profile, will be well respected, that not only will it be easier for his part to negotiate, even accountants at their own level negotiating will be much easier for their jobs and their roles because the accountancy will be a respected profession. We must remember all our members, all our members, those who have different challenges in arriving at the same level as we have, because what we want is equity, not necessarily equality. But please let's accept that members who are disabled have harder challenges in getting to those positions than the rest of us. And therefore, giving preference to our appointments with their committees or boards to those members who are disabled is not being unfair. It is building up an equitable ground, just like we must balance and support all those who are coming in, who come from disadvantaged uh, backgrounds to make sure we all get an accountancy that is fair to all. We must be the institute that every government employee who is an accountant looks up to, not just because he wants non practicing allowance, and that's important, make no mistake, it's important to get fair wage and fair work, but because he knows ISPAC is so respected that if the ISPAC chairman gets up to the president and says, this will be done, the president will say, I will give it a serious consideration and direct the minister to do so. That respect is important. Trust is an important enabler of negotiation. And, and you earn trust by being relevant to Wenjiku and the commoner. 
by speaking the language they understand, by having the bits that are important to them, and by standing in the gap for them when they look up to you and want for who will speak to us, who will explain to us what these adverse reports that we get mean. If the Auditor General issues up a report and the president says you cannot audit Eurobond, as did happen in actual sense in State House, the president did call on the then Auditor General, Edward Deuke, who speaks for that accountant? It will be because we are, we are stronger than many, you expect ISPA to tell the president that this is how we audit. We issue the audit standards. We are the accountants. We are the regulatory body of accountants. The standards that we issue require that the auditor must verify existence of those laws. So he is right and we support him. Because sometimes you understand and it's clear those who work for government will not be as that straightforward and as frank as they speak. And we get them to then come to and, and speak on their behalf. There are some things that you cannot do alone. You trust your body to speak for you. And when I am your leader, I will. Leading this profession and this institute would be an opportunity to create a legacy for very young children who'd come into accountants. But I also think it would be a chance to change our country. If you trust me with your vote, I will not just lead our institute. I will change our country. Together, the accountants of Kenya will change the discourse and the discussions in this country. We will not be in a place where corruption is accepted. We will not be in a place where it is okay to just get up audit reports, whether they are good or bad and life goes on and there are no consequences. Let's be fair, fellow accountants. The auditors and the accountants are both regulated by ISPAC. The, the subject they discuss is fairly technical and the man in the street will not understand it. Is it not just fair that if there's a, a problem in a public entity, we call them together and ask, what is the challenge? If it's the numbers, then we make sure you have the right numbers. If it's the training, we support that number. But we also then need to have a system that makes sure that only qualified and well-intentioned accountants carry out this work. We will build trust if we ensure that this accountancy is done by those who do the work and play by the rules, do the right work, uphold strong quality, and are happy to learn. We will build the trust in this profession and we will be respected and supported, and we will have a stronger voice to speak on matters of this country and to speak on the opportunities for our members and create a very strong body. Looking internally at ISPAC, my friends, in a year like this, which is a special year like no other, there should be no reason at all where, why members who supported the Institute for so long, just because they find themselves in a short economic crisis, cannot be supported by the Institute. I believe we lose nothing at all if we significantly discount the fees for CPD events for those who otherwise don't come because they earn too little, they are out of jobs and they will not come at all. So there's nothing you're losing. The training is already running. The marginal cost is nil. And now that we run online courses in this particular year, if you have paid your membership fee, but you cannot afford any CPD events, I will ensure that there are free CPD events that make sure you ensure you meet your CPD requirements for this year. If you've been there for ISPAC for long in your tough time, it must be there for you. The sustainability of the Institute is a strong matter. And in that matter, we are not taking away any money from the ISPAC because the training would run anyway. And I know many senior members, I know many experienced professionals, I included, would offer training services for free at all in this time to make sure that our less members who cannot afford for whatever reason are trained and are not left out of the institute are not locked out of the institute. In the long term, we will get the financial freedom that the, our leaders of the 90s uh, dreamed for. And when we do so, we would still then need to see where do we take that money. Our cost of events must be reviewed downwards. There, there is no reason at all why they can't be. We have survived in this COVID year. We will survive and we will get better. We have so many members outside ISPAC that should worry us of how they can come in the fold. That is where we should get worried. If we double the numbers of members of ISPAC, we double the contribution and we can therefore lower the events for those members and get it up. But there must also be enhanced member services, my friends. Those of you who are members of ACCA, CW know the kind of quality of information you get every week. You don't need to worry about newspapers. They'll get for you a summary of every financial information around the globe every week. The only mails you should not get is just the mails of this training, this CPD, you are not in good standing. You must get the things that are important for an accountant to know. You must be enhanced in your job. You must be supported in your job because you have paid membership for ISPAC and that must come with something else. 
And it doesn't matter whether you're a practitioner who gets licensed, whether you work for government, whether you work in private sector, whether you're doing your business, whether you are not even the mainstream profession. As long as you're a member, we will make sure that we look up to you and we look after you. And what, what we intend to do that, I intend to make sure that our member value management that looks at all our members, the 27,000 of them, and says CPA Denisha Sodo pays the subscription effectively. I can see he works for Safaricom. I can see he's been a member for long. I think he can pay. He's good reduced, but I think he can pay. But I also know CPA Mary Wanjiku, who has been paying, but for the last three years has not been paying. I'm not just going to say you have not paid. I am going to deregister you. I'm going to understand what has happened, what life change has happened. I also know a member who has joined because they're looking for a job and they thought joining ISPA could increase their chances. But the first time they join, all they get is a bill. Please be in good standing. There's a training happening here. I want to understand that member. And I know there's a member called Peter Kiamba who comes and says, I had just joined because I was looking for a job. Now I'm told I cannot be in good standing because I can't afford this bill. That's member value management. The segment of one will make sure I look at all my members on the R. And just as we pay taxes at different rates, there's no reason why we should not pay for our services at different rates. We get the same service from government, we pay differently. We must support our members who cannot. There are those of us who can, there are times that we can and we will support. And, 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 and lastly, my friends, I think it's also time that some of these things will require that we get back to the spirit of service. Let's get back to the volunteerism that made this profession. As a young accountant in PwC, I was given ISPAC accounts to cast, and that was my contribution. FCP Charles Mushene, who was the current leader of PwC, used to audit this in his own account, not as PwC. He was offering audit services to ISPAC as his contribution. When I did my first training of ISPAC as a trainer, there were no payments done those days. Many joined ISPAC council and committees not expecting any payment because they don't know that that should be the way it should come. Let's get back the spirit of service. Let's get back the spirit of volunteerism. Let's have a cognition system that awards those who offer to build this profession and to support and get for it. In so doing, we support younger members better. Let's not get into the business of looking at ISPAC as a business and thinking what we can get. This is an opportunity to serve. This is a position of service. And, and that is what I want to see ISPAC be. I want to see ISPAC as that pillar for all those who are young financial accountability, who believe in professionalism and who believe that this country can change. I invite you, my friends, to support my bid as I seek your support and votes as ISPAC chairman over the next two years to make this come true, to lead our profession into a position of respect and to change our country and lead the financial accountability agenda. Thank you. God bless you and hear you every time you pray. And as always, pray with me that God bless the profession that we love and the country that we call home. Thank you. Well, wow. some very, very heartfelt words from our host for the evening, Danish. Uh, you actually don't have to come from the accountancy background like myself to know that there is passion and a lot of truth in what he's saying. And I think for me, I walk away with make ISPAC uh, the, the bright star that it used to be, that we all could look up to. Thank you very much, Danish. Uh, audience, I can see your questions are coming in. Please let's keep them coming as we take a minute uh, to digest Danisha's words. And before going to the Q&A session, I want us to take a quick break uh, and we're going to have a fun trivia. And for this, we're going to do it on Kahoot. For those who are familiar with Kahoot, uh, you know to take out your app. And for those who are new to Kahoot, don't worry, it's a very popular uh, trivia platform. Uh, just like Menti, you'll need two devices. On your screen, you can see uh, the screen we're all going to see. That's the Kahoot main screen with the Kahoot pin, which is 9182946. I want you to uh, have your mobile phone out. Use the Chrome browser and go to kahoot.it. That's kahoot.it. For the veterans who have the Kahoot app already installed, just open it up and put in the Kahoot code. But if you're new to Kahoot, Here's how it works. The questions will be on the screen before you, and then you'll get multiple choices on a secondary device. That's why I would like you to open it up on your phone. You'll use your phone to answer as you use your main screen 
to see my questions before you. If you don't have two screens, then you have to open two separate windows, uh, two separate tabs of whatever browser you're using. I recommend Chrome, but you're free to use others. So one tab will be for the questions and one will be for the answers. I can see Bella, Robs, Tom and Pam have joined in as well as Cliff. Very good. Let's get creative audience. Give me some creative financial terminologies as you log in as your nick view. I know it's, it's a rough moment, but this is a time to just exhale a bit. Let's catch a quick trivia with our friends and uh, colleagues and see who is up to the task. And don't worry, my trivia for this evening will be around All Matters is Back, as is the theme of our host discussion. Okay, we have 15 of you who have joined. CPA, Kosge, I see you, Karibu Sana, our first CPA in the Kahoot. All right, Mazematic, I see you. Creative nickname right there. Okay, keep it coming. I think I'll start off CPA Maire, Karibu Sana, as well as Nora, Karibu. Now, don't forget uh, some tips on how to make sure you win uh, this Kahoot and other future ones. We're looking at who can uh, choose the correct answer in the shortest time. So if two people pick the correct answer, it's going to give more points to the person who did it in the shortest time. Accountants are fast and quick on their feet, so this should be an easy one for you. CPA Ohore, Karibu Sana, CPA Cheriot, Tunakuona, Matolo, Karibu Sana, we're at 23 members, let's get to 30, then we can start. I know we're eager to go through the questions, then we can head right back to Danish as he goes through the questions you've shared with him in the Q&A tab. For those with more questions, especially around what Danish has spoken about, the Q&A tab is your destination to make sure uh, it's addressed. Uh, those who are feeling a bit shy, it's okay. You can you can choose to ask a question anonymously. That's one of the options when you use the Q and A tab. CPA nineteen, Karibu Sana. I can see we are past thirty one. I'll count down from ten and then we kick off this trivia. All right, here we go. Welcome to the ISPAC General Questions Kahoot. Don't forget the choices will appear on your secondary device. Read the question on my main screen, then answer on your secondary device. So when was the Institute of Senate and Public Accountants of Kenya established? When was ISPAC established? I actually remember Danish speaking about it in his conversation. Let's see how many were paying attention. You have seven seconds left. I see 14 of you have answered. Don't let the clock beat you. Time is up. It was started in 1978. This is a very mature uh, organization. Let's see who's the first on our leaderboard. Who are the sharpest, most correct who got it? Get a fix, I see you, followed by Ibrahim and Palm, CPA, JBS, and CR, leading up our top five. Let's keep coming. We have nine more questions, don't worry. You can easily get to the top of the leaderboard. Our next question, what is the vision of the Institute? What is ISPAC's vision? How well do you know your organization's vision? I see eight people have already answered. There are people who are actually probably living the vision every day in their professions. Two seconds left, guys. Don't let the clock beat you. All right. Half of you got it correct. Half of you chose a very good answer, but the true vision is actually to be a world-class professional accountancy institute. Let's see how it changes the, uh, the leaderboard. Okay, get a fix still at the top, but a lot rising. We have four more questions. It's a six question quiz. Let's go to the next question. Now, which act of parliament gives ISPAC its mandate? How many people know the actual act? that gives its back its mandate. Uh-huh, tricky one, tricky one. Is it seven, 23, 10, or 15? Two seconds left, don't let the clock catch you. Okay, and don't, uh-huh, it is the Accountants Act number 15 of 2008. 
Good. I see a lot of people uh, managed to get that correct. To those who didn't, don't worry. We're here to learn and have fun. So now at least you have that bit of trivia tucked in uh, as you continue. Get a fix refuses to budge from the top position as we go to the fourth question. Who is going to move him from that position? How many branches does ISPAC currently have? Okay, how many branches does ISPAC currently have? Yay, eight seconds to go. Is it six, nine, ten, or twenty? Time is up. Ah, this one caught a lot of you off guard. We're currently at nine branches. I like the people who actually say it's ten and twenty. Let's see it grow. But for now, it's currently sits at nine branches. All right. Uh, at number two, I see the position board is changing. Very good. We're coming to the penultimate question in a minute. Get a fix is almost being nudged out by CR. Let's see if he'll make his move with the next two questions. How many chapters does the Institute have and can you name them? Okay, this is a bit of a toughie. How many chapters does the institute have? Is it one, two, three, or four? And are they correctly named? Three of you, three of some very sharp CPAs out there got it correct. There are two chapters, South Africa and Australia. Job well done. Don't worry, we're all learning. Uh, I can see our leaderboard as we head for the final question for this quick uh, trivia. Get a fix here. Watunga and two CPAs very close behind. Final question. The value proposition offered to members is centered around four key offerings. What are these four key offerings that form the value proposition? I know they all, all the choices look very, very good but there are some which are very key, specifically just to you. Enhance, enable, support, alignment. Unfortunately, none of you got it correct. It was a quick one, it was a very sharp one. You had to have been very keen about it, don't worry. We've all learned, and here are our champions for this quick trivia. So at number three, getting four out of six correct was CR. CR, why don't you give us a chance to give you some applause? Identify yourself in the chat section. Watunga coming in third. And finally, get a fix, getting four out of six correct in the shortest time. Congratulations. We can also see number four and five. Congratulations to all of you. And to everyone who managed to join in, I hope you've learned a bit more about this wonderful organization. Uh, but now, as promised, I would like us to get back to Dinesh. I can see our Q&A uh, tab is very, very active. So we're going to go straight into some of these questions uh, just so we can get some more clarity. So Dinesh Karibu, welcome back. In no, uh, in no particular order, uh, I'm going to share the questions with you. Uh, I think let's start with a rather personal one. I think this one is a lot on many people's minds. And the anonymous attendee asks, why is ISPAC silent, especially in time when there's a debt crisis growing in the country? Thank you. Many people rely on ISPAC because ISPAC is the way the professional sit to give direction, to speak on matters that affect accountability and economy. And to be fair, ISPAC is not as dead silent as the one we believed. A lot of papers and discussions have gone in. A lot of uh, work has gone by ISPA committees to present the case of what is it. We've asked government many times that it's, it's living on borrowed times. You cannot borrow yourself out of debt. And we've asked the government must now lower its expenditure and live within its means. I, I understand the member fully. I understand this question. I understand where it's coming from because it's possible that what, whatever ISPAC does, does not get the profile, does not get the positioning that would be <laughs> the member would feel that we are doing it the right way. And for two reasons. One, if we don't have a, a right pedestal, if you're not on the top of the mountain, then sometimes you speak as you climb the mountain and people don't see you. 
on top there. So if you get our positioning right to the mountain and get it there, then that would be okay. A member engagement is also quite important. So we can do, we might do a press conference, we might speak to the uh, CS treasury, but it's important that we engage our members. This is all about you, the member. If I, anyone, if, any, if I ever serve you in this office, I will do it only on your behalf and for your sake and for no other reason. And therefore engaging you to understand not just your inputs to what we intend to do, but also update you on what we're doing will be unimportant. And I will come to where you are irrespective of where you are. Because if I can find your contribution, if I can find you when I'm looking for subscription, I should find you when I need your input or when I need to update you on any matter. Thank you. Thank you, Dinesh. Another one of our attendees asks, what collaborations uh, does ISPAC have with ACCA? How can we convert to ACCA without doing too many papers? Thank you. And, and, and this is an area I think where many members will appreciate a lot of work that has gone in by ISPAC in trying to build collaborations, in trying to make sure ISPAC is recognized, CPA brand is recognized across the globe. We do a lot of, in my time in council, we did sign the MOU with Australia, the South Africa one existed, and UK, where you can then uh, practice in those countries. So if you went into some of those countries, there is a conversion plan for you to practice in those, in, in those countries. There are many other jurisdictions that our members go to that we still need to build onto and, 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 and get into that area. So the, the, the approach that is part of that if I adopted, which I think is right, uh, is to say, if I'm a CPA, CPA brand is a very strong brand. I want every accountant to be proud of their qualification of that brand. It's, it's a strong brand. And, and therefore, what I want to do is be able to go to the UK and, and work in the UK and be permitted to work in the UK on the basis of the CPA brand. Just the same way we have interchange that if they come here, then they work with us. ACCA, because they have a global presence, is very strong with this part in terms of how we then exchange even credits, even training credits. We definitely need stronger collaboration. Collaboration is a critical element in advocacy work, not just with ACCA, not just with other accountancy bodies, but even with the Institute of Internal Auditors, for example, with the, uh, the, the other institutes that are here, the certified public secretaries, there are a lot of bodies, professional bodies here that a closer collaboration with could enhance the value of CPA brand and therefore get the member get more value uh, from their qualifications. So what we commit to you is if you are an accountant, we, we, we follow the tracks of where our Kenyan accountants immigrate to most and work very hard to negotiate with the professional bodies in those countries to be able to have CPA recognized. And also I get the point of, if you want to do the local exams, then how do we get you to do just the local law and taxation. Those that we collaborate with, when they come to Kenya, they do the local taxation and law. And that is the collaboration that we also accept, that you do the local uh, law and tax. And we'll expand that and I commit to doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Now, speaking of partner organizations, we have Caleb Okoyo who asks, what plan do you have to recognize non-governmental organizations role within ISPAC? And a follow-up to that, are there any plans to have committees fostering NGOs, INGOs, and CBO's agenda within ISPAC? Thank you, definitely. We, we have committees that serve our members of specific sectors. So at a time that we needed practitioners for a critical sector, we had a committee for them. We had a public sector committee because there were specific concerns of that area. We have committees for youth and people with disabilities. And if the, the, the non-profit sector is now a sector that has been almost left out because it's a fairly small sector, but, but it's a critical sector. If you think about where we want to get to this part, uh, if you're going to push for the accountability journey in this country, we are going to require a lot of financial help. A lot of financial freedom of the Institute means not using members' funds for the core work of regulation and advocacy. If you, if you strengthen the governance structures of this country, there'll be a lot of donors who we can attract their funds to help us build that base. And a lot of these are non-profit sectors. So definitely the non-profit sector accountants, who are very many, and usually realize even our training calendar, we only give them one, uh, one or two trainings only in a year, would get a place to sit, or would have a special place to sit. When we go into representation, and we hope that in the next few years, we'll have even the council, and our, particularly the council, to represent different sectors of accountancy. So there'll be someone to represent private, public, practitioners, branches, everyone. There would be a seat for non-profit sector because it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sector just like all other sectors that we, we count in this particular bit. And, and those partnerships with them 
is also important. And if we get those accountants to come work with ISPAC, we can easily borrow on that bit. Many of you remember when uh, CPA Rispa Olik uh, joined council as she worked at uh, uh, the Amnesty International, we were able to push Wapinduru, something that is very critical. When we bring these links to ISPAC, we actually gain for them as members. So it's a win-win for all and we will pursue it. Thank you, Denish. Now, um, we have Phoebe who is curious about how you're going to use your experience that you've gained as Director for Audit and Quality Assurance at Safaricom to uphold transparency and accountancy uh, within ISPAC on matters especially of finance at the national level. Thank you. I have been privileged as an accountant to have a good experience in all fields of accountancy. And I owe almost everything I have to this profession. And therefore serving this profession with the values that it instilled in me as a young high school student is, 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 is the only thing I can offer is all that I have and it's what I have. I, I believe integrity. What we want this country to achieve in financial accountability is what we must live and exemplify whether it is in, in how we conduct ISPAC affairs, from the most basic things of how we run our own ISPAC and consult everyone, to all the way of how we push it. So in that bit, the experience that we've obtained is what we'll use to support our members in all sectors of the economy, uh, grow and be able to then support communities, raise the profile of accountancy, and as a result, create opportunities for more members. If our county, our, our counties, for example, ended up today the way we have many of them having bad audit reports. If they ended up many of them having clean audit reports because we've sat down with accountants and auditors, seen the ch challenges they have. And, and you, you realize people, those who work in public sector know the challenges in public sector are real. They are not the small matters, they are difficult and they require someone bigger like the ISPA to support them, navigate through them. And we will be there for you to support you navigate through that. But when you get that clean reports and all that bit, we not only expand the opportunities of our people, we create a profession that many young people would want to come into, would want to join in. And we also have a better country for ourselves. And, and we also become that profession of trust. We, we operate the trust industry, let's uphold that trust. So yes, the experience that I've got in this profession will be used to serve this profession with pride. Okay, thank you. Uh, CPA Komu Juguna, has this to say, if you happen to go through many financial statements for public sector entities, you will find that they are awarded a qualified opinion by the Auditor General. Most of the problems in these entities stem from perhaps what one would wish to call mechanical uh, stroke creative accounting by quark accountants. What are your practical plans, Dinesh, to reverse this trend and instill some professionalism in financial reporting in these entities? Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, CPA Komu. So let, let, me, let me first of all confirm that I understand the challenges that our members in public sector go through. So I, would, I, would, I, would, I, I, I see those reports and I get pinched, but I also know because we sit with them the challenges that they have to work through. And, and, and that is why I'm so passionate to get this part to a level where it can negotiate firmly I'd insist that the whole accounting chain in public sector will be manned by qualified accountants. Some of our members really struggle in the places where they work. Some of them are actually reduced to bookkeepers. They could be head of finance, but ineffectively because they're not accounting officers, they're reduced to bookkeepers. And this is the error we must correct. We're all accountants. These, these accountants are trained uh, by, by, and, and examined by Kasnet like all of us. So they understand what needs to be done. I am not for a moment apologizing for those accountants who breach the rules and don't play by them. Make no mistake, as a regulator, I will have no sympathy for anyone who breaches the rules because anytime we keep those who breach the rules amongst us, we lose the trust for all of us who play by the rules and who work hard to uphold this profession. So make no mistake, whether you're in private, public sector, practitioner or in business, anyone who doesn't live by our code of ethics, by our high moral standards will be sanctioned. But having said that, let's understand the, the, the challenges in the, the, that our members in public sector work through and create a good environment. Because I always wonder, how comes the same CPA in public sector gets the qualified reports and when they get into private sector, 
they get clean audit reports. That environment is what ISPA must fix. If you work in public sector, you can count on me to support a safer, professional working environment for you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have a member of the audience who is curious about any of your any of your achievements that uh, you you brought forward while you were vice chair for ISPAC. Thank you. I served in council for 2017 to 2019. In that period, the strategic plan that serves ISPAC now was approved in 2018 when I was the vice chairman. In that period, the Accountants Act was amended to expand the scope and opportunities of accountants and give way for multiple licenses that are now being realized at this time. In that period, we raised the bar and brought transparency to appointments to ISPAC organs and other bodies that are represented. In the year that I had influenced in the nominations committee, only one person qualified to get fellowship that year because we decided, we, we believed then, as I still do, that fellowship being the highest award the Institute can award must be given to those people to whom it is so clear that there'll be no doubt in anyone's mind why such a person has been awarded and there'll be no doubt why the others cannot, have not been awarded. The, the, those awards were purely based on submissions. I and many of the committees had never met then or after the person who was awarded fellowship that year. That was the transparency that was set up. Many members would recall in those periods, a lot of mails you would get would not just be about training as well, but there'd be a lot of board opportunities. We have been asked to nominate a member to this board, to this place, please apply if you want. It was very transparent. The decision to make it was so, so clear. It was so clear that you could evaluate yourself. For this mark, matter, you get this marks. For this matter, you get this marks. And, and this transparency is important because we are many members. If you elect me as your chairman and you support me, I, please note that I will serve all members of ISPAC, those who carry other competitors' banners and those who carry my banners. We do not have more than one ISPAC. And everyone who is a member, who has a passion to serve, an interest to serve, and desirous of service would get a chance to serve in my ISPAC. There will be not those who support me, who don't support me, who voted for me. That is unethical and professional and plainly wrong, and we can't allow it. This part is for all of us, and I was privileged that when I worked there, I achieved that transparency that any all of you could apply for board positions. And we used to receive a lot of applications, and we limit how many one person can sit on because we are many members to get to that matter. But, but, but the expansion of the space, and my, my, my last achievement just before I left was to make sure this financial accountability agenda picks face. The policy was approved by council in 2019. I, I know after that it has not picked up probably because of other commitments. So as I understand COVID disruptions, but that is something that we must pick up. Owning the financial accountability agenda in this country creates a critical space for expansion of accountancy and opportunities for accountants. And it's the right thing to do and we will do it. Thank you. That actually touches on our next question. We have an attendee who is curious about what plans you have for female accountants, especially in an area that we're driving diversity and inclusion as a nation. Thank you. We, all members, all members matter, and we are pursuing equity, not equality. Anyone must get equal chance to succeed. Everyone must get an equal space to succeed. In fairness, well, my friends, accountants have been very fair in terms, if you look at our council composition, it's all boosts, they, they almost do the natural constitutional balancing by themselves without any push and all that bit. But we, the place that was concerned, for example, was how do then uh, the, 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 the ladies rise to the top? What opportunities do they get? And how do they get in that place? And therefore, an equal opportunities to look at our membership and say, if we have 30% women in our membership, 30% of all our committees at all our appointments must reflect that number on the minimum because they too deserve a chance. There's no more space to look for who which other member is. So the, the supporting women accountants continue to support our work, who is back have supported for a long time is critical because our work develops and supports the growth of women accountants in very low. I want my daughters to have the same chance as my son in being an accountant and rising in that profession if they so choose. So removing any barrier that stops anyone from making it is, 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 is not just a good thing to do, it's personal to me, to make sure everyone has a chance. I am privileged to only have sisters. One of them is a member of the Institute. And because they've got that chance, I want every other lady to have a chance to grow in the Institute. 
Well said, thank you. Now I'm going to combine about four questions because I see they point at the same uh, target. Uh, the questions themselves are, currently most accountants barely understand the role of ISPAC, hence the outcry. What are your plans to cover this gap? Um, Second, a similar one is how do we change our image as a noble profession, driving accountability instead of being the punching bag of issues of corruptions within the public sector. And third, uh, the current leadership of ISPAC is wanting. Uh, members are uncomfortable with the ways of the, the ways uh, the affairs of the body are run. And what will you do to ensure that members are served to their satisfaction? So basically, Dinesh, when you, what is your image of ISPAC? Uh, should you take up the position? And how will you change current uh, pain points members are facing? Thank you. Let me pick them up all and I hope if I miss any, let me know. Let, let me say in general that I am extremely proud of accountants. I love this profession. I hold in high esteem all those who practice it in whatever level. And I want to create an opportunity where all those who practice accountancy, whatever place they are, find satisfaction and find fulfillment and find growth in this profession. I believe we run for this office because of you, the member, and for you, the member. For your sake and no other reason are we offering ourselves, not just myself, but everyone offering to serve is coming just for you because that is the only motivation of service in this particular matter. So to, to, to the image and the trust, because we are a trust industry. It is the trust of the profession that brings people to us. People look for audits because they can trust audited accounts. We trust our CFOs, we trust our auditors, we trust our practitioners, we trust our financial accountants because we build, they operate within certain ethical standards that they do. And, and that is what we want to do. So I believe the accountant in the public sector, for example, we must get back the public sector committee. The public sector has specific challenges and we must profile it because they carry with them. If you need a lot of questions that are coming through, there's a lot of concerns with public sector, there's almost a misunderstanding of the accountant in public sector. And I want that accountant, the public sector accountant to be understood. A significant part is also the training, uh, is also the engagement with members. Because we, we get, we look for you very much when you're looking for subscription. You get called so many times. I, I don't know how many times then you get called after that. To not only be asked what are your perspectives and views, it's not a good thing. The constitution demands that public participation is one of the values we created for ourselves as the people of Kenya. East Park is treated by laws of Kenya and is not exempt from that requirement. But also to update you on what's happening. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bit of apathy that I hope I'll bring back the belief in this East Park. I began by saying, and I'm still saying, I want you all to believe again in your abilities, not to bring about change, not in mine, but in yours. And I also want you to believe in the promise of this country. And I want you to believe that this profession can have and will have rewarding careers and opportunities for all of us and give all of us a chance to serve if you are willing to work for it. So the, the, the image of the profession I'm, 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 I have in mind is that respected body that, that when it speaks, it will be the moral leader in that space that before anyone in this country does anything about finances or accounting, would ask what is the position of the moral leader is back in this matter. What that which you cannot do for yourself is what the body does, create a brand. A lot of our members do hard work every day and it's our role as ISPAC to promote that work, to sh shine the spotlight on that work and to let people know and to explain to Anjiku that technical work in a language they understand. More importantly this time, to make sure every shilling of Anjiku is accounted for. And that is my desire. ISPAC will be that body that Wanjiku will look up to, to explain to them every shilling. And I want members to know that if we do that, we are creating many, many opportunities for members. This is about, this decade is about opportunities for members. This decade must be the time that we create new areas of accountancy. We build up completely areas that didn't exist. We expand the scope of the services we offer and we get opportunities for many willing to play by the rules, to work hard and to learn new skills, to get a space to grow their area in accountancy. We have had many things to do. This decade was the time we expand opportunities. All those young accountants who are yearning for, will I get a space in this competitive world? This is the decade to expand and create new areas, whether they're areas in risk management, forensic accounting, 
consulting and expand the big space available in taxation and create and increase the number of uh, practice, uh, practitioners and practicing firms in this country to make sure that accountancy is seen for what it is an important service in the running of economic affairs of a country. Thank you very much. Now, I know uh, with every single question you answered, Dinesh, we're getting almost three in response. And audience, uh, unfortunately, we, we need to have a hard stop at the top of the half hour, which is in about three minutes. But the, uh, the good thing is that this is not the only platform that Dinesh wants to engage with you and share his message, as well as address all the questions you've brought up. We will be sharing this on his YouTube uh, page, as well as his Facebook page. The links will be shared with you. Uh, but for now, I would like to kindly ask that we wrap up with a final question before Danish uh, gives us his closing remarks for this. Uh, and also just to allow also our Muslim brethren to also have a chance uh, to continue with their, with their ritual. Uh, so Danish, for our final question, um, we have a member here. Good. Brian Maiko asks, uh, it's currently practically very hard to get internship or experience in external audit, and not a lot of people uh, get these opportunities. How can these in be increased? Thank you, Brian. And what a way to be the last question, because that is the whole bit I'm talking about, opportunities. Those of you who are older knew the time when you used to leave university and automatically get a job, there was no debate. As the job began dwindling, they began telling you that you need to be competitive, improve on your skill, learn a new more skill to be competitive. And then they came up to do particular courses. But eventually they realized all those cannot be because effectively what is missing is there are no jobs in the economy. And you are 20 of you and only two of you will get jobs. It doesn't matter what skills you have. And, and Brian, the, the, the bit that I can tell you directly, the, the, the answer that the, there are two ways to answer that question. There's an immediate answer because you have an immediate challenge now. A lot of our old members and practitioners are also looking for these people to support them in internships and learn. And our curriculum needs to change to allow you to article, to learn in a farm as you get that. And our, through training, our training program that a lot of our senior members support will expand that to get an immediate fix. But believe me, that cannot bring everyone on board. What will bring everyone on board if we insist that no state corporation or public corporation can have a, 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 clean, a non clean audit report, whether it is adverse, whether it's qualified, whatever form. That will mean we then expand space in that area. We expand more accountants in that field. What will be is when we then create the profile of accountancy that every private sector employer knows if I employ an ISPAC member, I know this will not steal from me. Today, many employers, when they look for employees, they first of all look for, can, will you not steal from me before they check whether you're qualified? If ISPA can guarantee them that my accountants, if they steal from one, I will deregister them and they will not then be able to work for you having gone through the due process and confirm that they did do that. They will know that they're getting clean members and your ISPA membership would then be a better ticket for you to get a job and to do good work at that job. We must expand the base, the services offered by accountants. And, and, and the growth we are doing through the, the, the changed accountant act that expanded definition that now creates very many areas for accountants to practice in is an important one. Personal example, when I left college, there would be no dream that I would be an internal auditor because internal audit was not a strong profession then. Now it is a very strong and grown profession that a lot of universities are now to, starting to offer a degree in internal audit. So yes, we will deal with it in the short term in terms of uh, 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 getting the training program to work. But let's raise the profile of this profession. Let's have, let's have a seat at the negotiating table. Let's be the voice that when we speak, we are heard. And when we say that because uh, Baringo County has an adverse report, the Attorney General cannot express a report, we are not doing anything until they fix it. And therefore they need more members to work in that area. And we get members and support them to work. In that area, we'll create space for many accountants to get an opportunity to work. We must literally now create opportunities this decade. I commit to you that the vision, the plan for ISPAC this decade, every decade ISPAC has had a plan. The last one was increased membership. This one must be opportunities for members. Thank you very much, Dinesh. 
Uh, ISPAC fraternity and our audience at large, uh, you've heard it straight from him. And I know he'll keep on uh, engaging with you and speaking. We have some links uh, for his LinkedIn page, as well as his Facebook page. Uh, more links to his social media will be shared, as well as a link for those who'd like to rewatch this video or share it with your colleagues. So look out for that. We have your details as you registered uh, for today's session. Uh, but now I'd like to give him a chance to give us any parting words and or his closing remarks as we come to the end of our session this evening. My fellow accountants, this service is about you, the member. It is also up to you, the member, to decide which service and direction you want to take. Often, we come to election points and treat them as entertainment and then spend the next cycle wondering why things are not working. I ask you that if you want change to happen, be that change. I ask you that if you want opportunities for our members, accept to raise the profile and serve our country. It will create opportunities for members. I ask you that if you want enhanced member services that serve you directly, if you want to be treated as an individual member, then focus on those who are focusing on you. I come to you with humility, with gratitude, but with a lot of hope for the future. I have unfailing hope in this profession. I believe and love this profession. I believe and love this country. And in that hope, I come to you to request for your vote and support to be your chairman. I thank you. Thank you very, very much, Danish, uh, for those final words. Uh, to our audience, thank you very much for making time. I know, especially for a Monday, usually it's one of the busiest days we have. You've made time because you believe in the future. You believe in INSPAC and you believe it can be taken back to where it was and to greater heights. And I, and I know you also believe that Denisha Soto, CPA Denisha Soto, is the person uh, to take it there. I would like to thank you all for making time, uh, as well as Denish and the other members of the team who have made this come alive. Thank you all. And I wish each and every one of you a very good evening and uh, Ramadan Karim to our Muslim brothers. Have a good and safe evening. Thank you.